Welcome back to the Class Tips YouTube channel. This last CWL, I had the pleasure and enjoyment of being with the good guys for CWL. Big thanks to Trample Damage for letting me join his OP clan to do CWL with. We are in Champs 3 as far as Clan War Leagues go. And I was able to use Super Bowlers for pretty much all my attacks. I had five triples this week. Sat out one day, did not get a triple one day. That was actually day one. We're starting with day two because day one was not a triple. We will show day one at the end. So that way you can see my fail and sometimes the Super Bowler plan that I put together sometimes just doesn't work. Finding bases where this strategy works is getting more difficult over time because people starting to build bases and base builders are picking up on the OP-ness of the Flame Flinger. But there is still ample opportunity to use the Flame Flinger and to do Super Bowlers in this manner. I typically always use the Flame Flinger first. I'll always put down a Coco Troop. Sometimes that's a Yeti, sometimes that's a Hog, sometimes that's a Loon, sometimes that's a Baby Dragon. Just depends on the base and whatever it calls for. I'll typically use the Flame Flinger on one side and it's pretty much essentially for pathing. I mean, if I can get some great defenses down along with that Flame Flinger, I don't necessarily always go for the Eagle or always go for an Inferno Tower. I typically put the Flame Flinger down on one side, then I put the Grand Warden down on the other side, and then I send my Super Bowlers and my King and my Queen with the Healers and some Coco Loons, I send them right up the middle. Unlike a Hog Attack or a Hybrid Attack, I typically do not send my RC in with the main portion of the army, but I hold her back so that way she can pick up defenses that are kind of straggling on the sides and then once my super bowlers and the main body of my army have taken out the core of the base i'll look for places that i can freeze places that i can put my invisibility spell down to save my rc to save her ability and then typically on the back end it's just cleanup you will notice through every single one of these triples, every single one of these attacks, I do everything in pretty much the same order, and hopefully that's an order that you can follow as well. I have found some decent success with Super Bowlers. It's not something that I picked up right away and I was able to get right on the first try. I had to do it in Legends League for a month or so before I was really able to get the hang of it, but it's something that you can do as well. They actually have a rotation in the good guys, and so I sat out of day three, was not able to attack, but on day four, I ran across this base and I love ring bases for super bowlers. Super bowlers absolutely tear up ring bases. And also, as I said, sometimes you're not able to use that flame flinger. You do want to take out the corners, take out the sides, do that funneling so that your super bowlers can go right down the middle. But a flame flinger is not the only siege machine that you can use to accomplish that. In this one, I'm going to do a warden walk from the top. And that warden, the goal of that warden is to take out that air defense and then to start taking out that wizard tower. I was actually a little worried that my grand warden might path downwards. I was a little worried maybe I got it off a little bit. But once the warden started targeting that wizard tower, I knew that we were in a good place. I put down my king on the other side and then used a siege barracks in this case. I followed the traditional smash attack by putting a couple witches down on the side. And then once the corners were adequately funneled, Adequate, adequately, adequately, adequately funneled, then I put my super bowlers down and I do it in the same exact order every time. So I put my queen down or sometimes my ice golem first, just depends. But I put my queen down next to the aura of the grand warden, put down my ice golem, put down my super bowlers, put down my coco loons, and I do that in the exact same way every time. A lot of attacking is going to be rote memory, doing it the same way every single time, so that way you don't make mistakes whenever you're approaching the next base. And if you get in the habit of doing something over and over again, then it just gets to be something that you do and, and you're able to just kind of pattern yourself after. One thing I do like to do with my Super Bowlers is oftentimes they will have to go through the Town Hall Poison. They can typically avoid the Town Hall Blast because their bounces bounce pretty darn far, but they are going to typically walk through that poison. So I'll do two things to avoid them from going through that poison orange juice. I will, number one, rage before the Town Hall so that the healers will heal up those Super Bowlers in the most effective way possible. And the second thing that I'll do is if I haven't used the Warden Tome already in a super high damage area, then I will tome through that orange juice. I'll tome through the Town Hall poison. That way those Super Bowlers actually have a chance of making it. Again, I typically bring the RC in on the opposite side. On this one, the Siege Barracks Hogs actually cleaned out the other side and everything just trampled right down the middle. <laughs> Tra trample damage, trampled right down the middle. Shout out to Trample. <laughs> Here we have CWL day five. And again, I do everything pretty much in the same order. Put down my Coco Troop, which in this case is gonna be a Yeti. Thankful I put that down because Tesla's popped and Tesla's can do 
wreak havoc on your flame flinger. Again, I always typically put the flame flinger down first because the flame flinger takes the longest. It actually takes longer than a warden walk. So I typically do not go with the warden first. I typically always do the flame flinger first. Then I start the warden walk on the other side with the goal, of course, of cleaning out those corners. One tip is always have a wizard handy just in case a skelly trap pops. Some base defenders are starting to put giant bombs in places where they think that a flame flinger can go. I don't run into that a lot, but it is something to remember and keep handy just in case. Also on the other side with the warden, keep a rage handy if that warden's about to go to ability. You do not want that warden to go to ability if you can help it. You can still three star if the warden does go to their ability, but you wanna try to save it if possible. Once those corners are adequately funneled, it's gonna be the exact same outline. It's gonna be BK, Queen, Ice Golem, Super Bowlers, and then Coco Loons. And Coco Loons are super important. As you can notice, two black mines went down to one Coco Loon. And then right here, another black mine went down to that Coco Loon. And those black mines would have definitely taken out multiple healers. And that is one of the most dangerous things for Super Bowlers because Super Bowlers are super squish squishy, squishy. They die really easily. And so you want to make sure that your healers are rage and they keep those Super Bowlers alive. If you can keep those Super Bowlers alive, then you have a really solid chance of three starring. Again, save that Warden ability for when your Super Bowlers and when your troops are going through a high damage area. For this example, they're actually approaching the Town Hall. And so I hit the Tome right as they're approaching the Town Hall. I send in my RC at the bottom. Again, taking out the side, not putting the RC with the main portion of my army, looking for a side entrance. I had to freeze the enemy RC so that way that RC could go through it. And then I hold on to my invisibility spell so that way I can save the RC as much as possible. And then of course, don't forget cleanup whiz. A lot of attacks, if I didn't bring cleanup whiz or if I forgot it, that's one reason why I use a traditional army, pretty much the same one every time with a few minimal adjustments is because you can time fail because sometimes this takes a little bit longer. It's not as fast as say a Lalo attack is, but following these steps, every Super Bowl attack can definitely help. Day number six was kind of funny. Uh, for some reason we were mashed up against a bunch of Town Hall nines and tens. I'm assuming that they were trying to drop. Here's day number six, I tripled, yay. <laughs> day number seven, exact same process, exact same outline. Put down your Coco Troop, which in this case I decided to use a Hog Rider. I actually should have used a Hog Rider on the other side to try to trigger Skelly Traps. I forgot to bring a second Hog Rider. I used a Loon on that side just in case a Tesla would pop. I used a Warden Walk on this side. Uh, and we're just going to carve out those corners. We're going to carve out each side so that way the Super Bowlers can go straight up the middle. Sometimes, like on this base, you will have a king or a hero, like an RC or a queen, that's kind of on the outside. And the purpose of that is to try to prevent a warden walk. If you see that, then you can use a headhunter. I like to put a headhunter and then under rage because I wanted that Grand Warden to be able to get through all of these defenses in time. One thing, of course, I'm a bit worried about on that Flame Flinger side is that Expo and that Flame Flinger is going to be coming within range of that Expo pretty soon. One thing that I did do a little bit differently on this base that I didn't do in the others was I decided to use a Quad Quake in the middle of the base. My reasoning for that was I would have had to use two jumps anyway. And with that Quad Quake, I was able to get a little more surrounding damage on those surrounding buildings. I did start my attack with the King on the opposite side. I did not notice that Builder Hut, and that Builder Hut is slowly repairing that scatter shot, but that scatter shot has to go down in order for this attack to be successful. But again, same order, BK opposite side, Queen within the Warden's aura, so that way the Warden will actually go with the bulk of your attack. Then you're gonna put down your Ice Golem, then you're gonna put down your Super Bowlers, and then your Coco Loons. The next step, of course, as you're putting down your rage, just rage through the path of the Super Bowlers, is to wait for an opportune moment to do your Warden Tome. I could have done it right here, decided to hold off just a little bit. I wanted to wait until those Super Bowlers were within range of that Town Hall. I was a tad bit worried that those Super Bowlers would not get the Town Hall because that uh, Whirlwind Tornado Trap, wow. That Tornado Trap went off just as those Super Bowlers approached that Town Hall. I'm assuming that that was for maybe a Hydra attack where you're bringing in a blimp on the backside. But I put that RC down on that cannon, which would have been an opportune spot, but it had a double purpose of being able to target the Town Hall if the Town Hall didn't go down. 
don't forget your cleanup whiz. Again, I've had many attacks that have time failed because my queen or my RC or whatever troops I had left had to go back and get buildings that weren't cleaned up that were missed on the initial entry. So do not forget cleanup whiz. I typically bring two or three for every attack. I waited for that air defense to go down, drop the last two loons that I had, just happened to have extra loons on hand. And then at this point, it's just cleanup, just making sure that all the buildings are taken care of. So this was actually my fifth triple of CWL. The next attack is gonna be my one non-triple for CWL. And I wanted to go ahead and show it to you. I followed the exact same steps, the exact same outline. I put down my Coco Troop, which again, in this case was a Yeti. I wanted to distract that mortar that was at the top side so that my Flame Flinger wouldn't get targeted. Started my Warden Walk down at the bottom. And again, you can see that Yeti is gonna path around and keep that mortar distracted the whole time while my Flame Flinger is gonna target it. Because I had that Yeti in front, I wasn't too worried about Skelly Traps. But again, keep your finger on a wizard or a couple archers. So that way, if a Skelly Trap pops, then you're able to catch it before it starts targeting your Flame Flinger. That Flame Flinger is gonna outrange everything except for Expos and then possible Teslas that would pop. So you wanna make sure that you're ready for those Skelly Traps if they do pop on you. On this attack, one of the reasons why I failed was because the goal was to get the Eagle down and those two Builder Huts were sitting there repairing that Eagle. Something to remember, I didn't notice it in my initial perusal of the base, but my Warden Walk is pretty much done on the bottom side. I'm just sitting there waiting for my Flame Flinger to get down that Eagle. You do wanna try to start the main body of your army by the two minute mark. And then at that point, it's just following the same pattern as putting down your BK, your AQ, your Ice Golem, your Super Bowlers, your Coco Loons, making sure that everything goes up through that funneled out section directly in the middle. At this point, everything seems to be going pretty much okay. I funneled well, my troops are going up the middle, my healers are raged, everything's staying alive. But it's right at this point, it's right at this point when I noticed that my Super Bowlers are starting to split. And one of the most important things with Super Bowlers is that they don't split, but they stay together. So that way your healers can focus on one big glob of troops at one time. Also, there was an enemy Ice Hound in that enemy CC. I did start to panic a bit at this point because I wanted to make sure that I could get the town hall down. And one thing that Super Bowlers are famous for is one stars if you can't get to the town hall. And so I, I focus all of my attention on getting the town hall down. I send in my RC at the bottom with the goal of pathing towards the town hall, hoping that my queen passed toward the town hall. Thankfully, I was able to get it, but unfortunately on this attack, I was unable to three star. Hopefully the Super Bowl Bola, Toba. <laughs> Hopefully the Super Bowler guide was helpful. I know that Super Bowlers are gonna continue, continue to be OP as long as Supercell decides not to nerf them. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Please leave a comment in the comments below. And also consider subscribing to our channel for more OP videos. Thanks so much for watching.